Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. Where in the world am I tonight? I am in Disney World over by the Yacht Beach Club Swan and Dolphin Resorts, sort of at this lake where there's a bunch of different resorts around. Somewhere over here is a pirate ship, kind of hard to see. Anyway, we are here to review a sub hundred dollar beginner's record player. This is by, I think a new company, Sound Beast, and it's a retro wooden turntable all in one. And like I always say, there is a very definitive market for these. But is this a good one? Is this a recommended one? We'll put it through its paces as we always do. You're not gonna wanna miss this. Okay, and here it is, the Sound Beast Retro Wooden Turntable, not record player, with Bluetooth, USB, and pitch control. I like pitch control. Beautiful handmade wooden exterior, three speeds, USB recording. That's cool. So this will be interesting. You know, like I said, $100. Will it give us a good starter turntable? Okay, let's go ahead and... Take a gander. First thing we have is an owner's manual. Everything's in foam blocks. We've got a power supply there on the left. So let's go ahead and get it out of the box. See what we got here. Dust cover appears to be loose. So there's the dust cover. It's got an outer wrap in addition to like a cling wrap, protective cling wrap. That's good. Usually don't see that on entry level ones. And then the unit itself, I can hold it with one hand, but it's got some heft to it actually, surprisingly. All right, I'll put that over there, take off the foam block, take off the 45 adapter protector. And by the way, have you ordered your official Recordology 45 adapter yet? Check out the link in the video description below. Take off the stylus guard, the little twisty tie holding the tone arm down. And back to the manual real quick, I wanna point out this warranty. That's a, that's a good heck of a warranty there. So, and US-based tech support, that's something to really consider because if you do have an issue, you know, it's good to know that you're not gonna to have to deal with a faceless company. So, okay, so um, yeah, let's start top down, I guess. So we do have a Skywind type of mechanism. This particular one is shock mounted. We got the three rubber nubs. It will be a ceramic cartridge. We'll look at that here in a minute. This particular one has a cueing lever. Let's check out the descend. The descend is nice and gradual. Let's check out the bearing. Pretty tight as far as these go. There's not a ridiculous amount of play there. Go ahead and close that back up. Let's take a closer look down here. We've got three speeds. I do like the high contrast uh, labeling there versus just the raised plastic letters. Auto stop switch, uh, obviously the pitch control. Let's check out these knobs. Oh, those are, are those metal or plastic? I think they're plastic, but they're for, they actually felt like metal at, at first there, but we got the pitch knob and there's good drag on that. The selector switch and then the volume knob as well does have a headphone jack which is a very very good thing let's take a look at that phono cartridge up close okay so like i said it is a ceramic cartridge and you will notice that the cantilever there the little uh, piece holding the stylus is plastic as well these are the cheaper variants that they make so and and the stylus is ruby you can tell the reddish hue to it Shouldn't be a problem, but be aware that these will wear out a little bit faster. So you may want to upgrade your needle, your stylus to diamond. And by the way, the only difference is that the Ruby doesn't last as long. It's a, it's like a hundred record plays, like record sides. So 50 front and back records versus like a thousand with a, with a typical diamond. So it's a good, it's got get you started. It's kind of like when you buy a printer and you get a ink cartridges, have just a little bit of ink to get you started. Then you got to buy the ink. And uh, yeah, but it's cheap diamond ones. You get like a three pack for 10 bucks, no big deal. All right, I put the dust cover on, it's totally clear. It does have the little rubber nubs on the side, 
which somebody said can be used to grasp it and also to you know protect the plinth as well. I do like on, on the back here where they attach these nice sturdy metal bracket hinges, which is a good thing. Since we're back here, let's look at the back panel. Good place for the fabric seam to be put, I like that. A little protective cover here on the on the back panel. So we got a line output so you can connect it to an external uh, sound system, which is good. An aux input, which is good. And a five volt power supply, two amps. And let's go ahead and look at the bottom as well. There's not a whole lot to see back here. Interesting place for the branding on this uh, piece of masonite back here. The rear feet plastic cup with a foam rubber sticker and the front ones, instead of a black plastic cup, have sort of a chrome finish. And then the fabric is tucked and pinned underneath there as well. On the right side of the unit, we've got a panel with a USB jack and transport controls. So this will not only record from the record player and probably from Bluetooth as well, but it will in fact uh, function as a playback device. So you can put MP3s on there. Guessing it's probably 128K recording quality, but we'll do a test. We'll test that out as well. And um, another thing I wanted to point out is the fact that this says it's a turntable. And the reason why I want to point that out is I typically consider anything with built-in speakers, which this has, to be a record player versus a turntable. Okay, so let's see, this should be five or six grams. And it looks like it's pegging at about five. Is it set? Yeah, it's set even. So let's do this. Let's put the five gram weight on the scale and then we'll zero it out. So now what we'll do is add five to whatever it says. So let's go ahead and put this back on there. So we'll, we'll, say, we'll say almost one, almost one. So it's basically tracking it almost six grams. So 5.93 grams. That's perfectly in range for this cartridge stylus. This is a strobe warning if you're sensitive to flashing lights and flashing patterns, turn it off because we're about to get strobey here. Starting with 33 RPM, which is right here, it is moving a bit fast. But remember, we've got a pitch control, so watch this. I am going to make it perfect. Awesome, that's why we want a pitch control. So, if I move it up to 45, it's gonna be a little bit slow and I'm gonna have to turn that up a little bit. Ideally, these would all match once you have it set. 78 RPM is moving quite a bit slow, so we're gonna speed that up. Yeah, perfect pitch is great. I'm so glad that it has a pitch control. You need a strobe disc in order to, you know, check the speed accuracy because it doesn't have one built in, but you could print a strobe disc off on paper right off your printer. You can get them free online. By the way, if you heard a little bit of a hum while I was testing the uh, 33 RPM there a minute ago, I had the volume cranked, I didn't realize it, and the mic was right by the speaker. So not really an issue, um, it was minimal, but because the mic was sitting right there, you might have heard some of that. For your listening pleasure today, we have Vinyl Moon Volume 86. I don't think I've featured this one on the show since we unboxed this record. And as I always do with a record player with built-in speakers, I am going to unplug the vocal mic, and instead of doing a direct feed, I'm gonna be using the front firing mics on the camera and get an in the room ambient stereo test. So I'll get the camera down there by the speakers, and you can hear for yourself how good the amplifi amplification is, how good the speakers are. Hopefully they've got some bass, some high end, hopefully they're not boxy or muddy. I will also summarize my impression being in the room here as well.
thoughts were that it actually sounded better than expected. I, you know, it was fine. It wasn't gonna blow your socks off with the sound quality. That being said, the speakers are pretty mid-range. They're sort of, you know, full-range speakers, I would say, because there is a touch of high end. There was an ample amount of bass for what this is. Again, it's not gonna blow your socks off, but it was very listenable. I was actually getting into the music there and able to uh, really connect to it, which, you know, when the technology disappears and you're able to really focus on the art, then that is when you have succeeded. So I'm gonna say that the sound quality on here wasn't half bad, which was surprising in a good way. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is make a recording onto our USB drive from the record itself. And then we're gonna take a look at the file, give it a direct feed sound test, and find out what kind of file we're dealing with and how high of resolution. This unit will not only record but it will split. So if you want to do a whole album, you can hit the split button between tracks and it'll separate each song into an individual file, which is good. So in order to start, all we have to do is hit record. So I'm going to go ahead and cue this back up and we're going to hit record and it's going to flash blue and red, which means it's recording. And then when we're done, we're going to hit the record button again. And once this gets done, we'll give it a listen. way too bright up there and it's far too easy to breathe when it gets cold outside i don't know how to build a fire to get i was actually surprised the bit rate is 256k which almost i think every one of these recordable record players that i've ever where you can record onto mp3 that I've ever tested have been 128K. So that's a good, good resolution. Now the song we listened to had some distortion in the song, so maybe it wasn't the best track to demo it with, but with that resolution, that is good. You can make a good MP3 file with that. And a ceramic cartridge, don't let that get you down necessarily because a ceramic is great for used records, worn records, um, records that require heavier tracking like 78s. If you put the proper stylus on this, upgrade it to a three mil wide groove stylus. This would make a fantastic 78 player, especially with the pitch control on there. So I have to say, I am very impressed with this unit. It does what it's supposed to do and it does it very, very well. And the price just under a hundred bucks. I think that this would be a fantastic, fantastic starter turntable for somebody just getting into this, for possibly a kid or teenager, somebody getting into it. I'm not gonna say a senior again because I got raked over the coals for that. But anybody that wants to get into vinyl, get back into vinyl, this is not too shabby. Um, also, yes, you can play it with the lid closed and it does protrude out the back a little bit. I know that triggers some people. I personally don't see why that's a problem, but uh, some people don't like that. So yes, it does hang out the back, but you can play it with the dust cover closed and that is a good thing. So I'll put a link in the description down below, but mostly I just want to say thank you for watching this. Thank you for all of your support. Thank you for subscribing. If you haven't done so already, definitely do that. And as always, we've got merch. We've got ways that you can support the channel and that's appreciated, but mostly we just appreciate you being there and spending time with us every week, sometimes a few times per week, trying to do a couple shows a week right now. So got a lot more coming your way. You're not going to want to miss, but my friends, that's going to do it for now. Happy record hunting. We'll see you next time.